going on? This is Lucas here. Welcome to my video. I'm super excited because today we're going to be talking about all the most popular digital audio workstations. I'm hoping to help beginners choose the software to learn how to do music, but this is actually also going to apply to more advanced users that are looking to pick up a second software or maybe pick up another program to try to make money working in audio and production. And uh, we're going to just dive right in here. So I decided to make an Excel spreadsheet. And I know this is a little bit ridiculous, so just a little bit of background. I've been uh, basically making music using computers for almost 20 years at this point. So I've spent a lot more time than you probably want to uh, learning different softwares and just kind of doing music in every capacity using computers. So... I thought that it would be smart to lay out a spreadsheet just so that you can look at some of the criteria that I decided to rate all these programs by. And uh, the thing is, is we won't have enough time to go through every single category for all these programs. Otherwise, we'll be here for like 30 minutes and no one's trying to sit around uh, for that. But um, basically, just to give you a lay of the land so you understand what's going on in this, in this spreadsheet, I'm going to leave it up for the whole video so you can uh, look at it. But we have all the programs here, or at least the ones that I've either used or heard of people using. Um, obviously, there's many more, but these are the most popular ones. I'm almost 100% certain. Um, the operating systems that it work on, that the programs work on, which is super important, you have to choose one that works on your computer or the computer that you plan on buying to do music. Um, the recommended skill level, um, so some programs are just going to be a little more advanced than others and some are just going to be easier to pick up for beginners so that's what that is related to the target market which is my opinion but just basically the type of person that i think that would benefit the most from each of these programs the cost of the program they obviously have different uh, subscription plans and things like that so you really have to go to the website to get the full breakdowns but i just did the full cost for the full-on version of the program so like the highest uh, the, the most expensive one but there should be some cheaper options if you're just trying to learn it and you want to get the intro versions so now we're going to get kind of into the actual rating so we're rating all the programs based on how how well they perform uh, doing audio editing and audio mixing um, how well do they do MIDI functions? So like for composers and producers that are going to be uh, programming a lot of MIDI keyboards and things like that. How well do they perform for doing sampling and beat making and things like that, which is super important these days. How good are the included instruments and effects? How stable is the program? This one is super dependent on your system and the plugins that you're using. These ratings are based off of my experience and also my experience talking to other producers and engineers. Um, stability is a huge issue, especially if you're working in professional uh, studios and stuff like that. You just can't have it crashing because you might lose uh, takes or whatever it is. So it's critical. The graphical user interface, how sleek is it? Is everything laid out in the, you know, where you would expect it? That kind of thing. How good is the workflow? How fast can you get from point A to B is what I mean. So how fast can we get from starting from scratch to complete song workflow? Next one is depth. This is a broader category. So when I'm talking about depth, I'm talking about like how much does the program have under the hood? How much stuff can you customize? Um, those kinds of things. So how deep does it go? How, how detailed can you get with everything in the program? And some programs are way more deep than others. How's the learning curve? So how quickly can you basically start making music from start to finish? Um, you know, just from being a complete novice to, uh, to you know, finishing your first songs. Um, online resources, which is a huge category. So this refers to how easy is it to find information online to help you either solve problems or learn how to do things, right? So we're talking about user manuals, lots of videos on YouTube explaining things, um, schools and organized courses online. So how readily available are those online resources? Next one, how frequently is the company providing updates and support? Uh, for their program. So this is a huge one. If you spend $500 on a DAW, you're going to want to get updates down the line when, you know, maybe you upgrade your computer or whatever. So you want a company that's really uh, staying up to date with things. Um, next thing is the utility. This one's a really important category. So I'm talking about utility. How useful is it if you know this software? Are you going to be able to get gigs? Are you going to be able to get paid working using the software? Those kinds of things. So how much utility are you going to get? 
out of learning how to use it. And then we have a total score, which is everything added up, switch to a percentage. And then I also included some famous users in case you're trying to look on YouTube and see some people actually using the software in their productions. I tried to pick ones that I know for a fact have videos of them using the program on the computer so you can see them making music from start to finish. So that's that category. So we're going to kick this off with Pro Tools. So Pro Tools is an absolute beast of a program. It is the industry standard for recording studios, at least in the United States. You can run it on Windows, Mac. It is a very advanced and professional software. And I would say that it is best used if you're trying to do engineering, recording, and mixing. Also for audio post-production. So pretty much things that involve working with large quantities of audio. Pro Tools is absolutely the best for that. It is the most expensive on this list, coming in at $2.99 per year. Ouch. Um, so as I was saying, if you're working with audio, if you're planning on mixing, if you're planning on having people send you large quantities of audio to mix and master, Pro Tools is going to be the way to go. It has extensive key commands, like ridiculous amount. It does take a long time to get going in Pro Tools, I would say. I think it took me about a year to get super comfortable using it uh, with clients and things like that. It does have very good MIDI features, but I would say that people that are trying to do production and songwriting are going to be most frustrated using Pro Tools. It's just a little too slow. They don't have great included instruments and they don't have great sampling capabilities. It is very capable of doing pretty much anything, but I would just say that compared to some of the other programs on this list, it might not be the best if you're trying to do purely production and beat making and that kind of thing. The user interface is great. The workflow is great. It's definitely top notch. Um, I didn't give it such high scores for depth and learning curve. So depth, the only thing is that I think that there's other programs that are a little bit more customizable, like Cubase, where you can customize your key commands and stuff like that. But for what it's worth, the key commands in Pro Tools are the best, uh, pretty much they're really at the top of their game with that kind of stuff. So learning curve is not great. It, like I said, it kind of took me a while to get it going. Uh, to, to get super comfortable using Pro Tools, I would say give it maybe a year before you, you kind of know what you're doing. But there are fantastic online resources, schools, that kind of thing available for Pro Tools. So it's a breeze to learn things. The manual, everything is, is very well uh, documented online. They do update Pro Tools. Uh, they make small, like minor adjustments to the software, but Avid, surprisingly, is, uh, is keeping up to date. And it seems like they're adding features that people are asking for. And lastly, Pro Tools get, gets a 10 in utility because I think if you're a really capable user of Pro Tools, you can definitely get paid doing things in the audio industry and in music and stuff like that. So it has top-notch utility. And some famous users, if you want to check out people using uh, Pro Tools, Dave Pensato, pretty pretty much like most mix engineers, honestly, like on those platforms, like Mix with the Masters and stuff like that. It's all Pro Tools and Studios. But for producers, you can check out Stargate. They're a production duo in LA, Charlie Puth, and Harry Fraud, who makes hip-hop beats in Pro Tools. And um, so, yeah, the second one that we're going to get into is Logic. So Logic is Mac only, unfortunately. It is super good for starting out with music. I think it's really accessible for beginners, and uh, it's also great for pro users, so it's just a wide target market. I think it's best for producers and composers and kind of like all-around producers. You can do engineering and mixing in it, but I don't know if it's the best choice for audio editing and things of that nature. The cost is unbeatable. It's stupidly cheap, so it's the best in that category for sure. Um, I think Logic definitely shines because of its included instruments and effects that are amazing. Tons of great instruments just right out of the box. Sampling capabilities are very, very good. Um, the GUI is amazing and the workflow is amazing. And there's great online resources. So it's just a killer program. It is one of the highest scoring ones on this list. I think it just is super useful for a wide variety of tasks. And if you want to check out some producers in action uh, for like rock and metal, there's this guy, Nolly Get Good, who's fantastic. Disclosure, which I'm sure you've heard about. They use Logic and make amazing music. Oak Felder is a pop producer and Phineas is another pop producer. So check out videos of them using it. They're awesome. Next program is Cubase, which is an absolute behemoth of a program. It runs on Windows and Mac more recently Mac, but it's been on Windows for a while. 
it is super advanced. I would not recommend using Cubase if you don't know audio and music basics. I think uh, you could pick it up if you get like you can get like the elements version or whatever, but it's a very advanced program and I don't think it makes sense to learn it first. Um, it's definitely targeted at composers, film composers, producers, and all around producer mixer people. Um, the cost is kind of right in the middle of everything. It's reasonable. You can get discounts if you, there's like, they have like a competitive cross grade and there's different versions. So you don't have to pay full. Um, it has great audio and outstanding MIDI capability, probably the best MIDI capability out of all of these. It, it does some ridiculous things. Um, it's just, it has wonderful included instruments and effects. It's very stable, and it's a very deep program. You can customize all your key commands. You can customize macros, which will essentially allow you to execute certain processes in a specific order and then trigger that by a key command. So it's it's unreal. But the downside is that it's very complicated. It is um, definitely not an entry-level program, but I think if you spend the time learning how to use it, it could be ridiculous for online resources i found that it's hard to learn how to use cubase because there's limited resources limited videos of people using it there they exist and there's obviously a manual and stuff like that but definitely nowhere near the amount of online uh, tutorials as uh, pro tools and logic they're updating it maybe not as much as the other programs but they are out there doing updates and utilities mediocre low i don't really honestly know too many people using cubase you can definitely do everything in the program that you need to do but i, I haven't really been to a studio that's running cubase so i'm not sure about that but it does have a decent total score just because the midi and and audio functions and, and the depth of the program are, are very very great so that's cubase next one is ableton which is one of my favorite programs and it runs on Windows and Mac. It's great for beginners and for pros. It's actually targeted uniquely at DJs and producers, people that do live music, and also artists. Um, however, you could still use it for beat making and mixing and stuff like that. I just don't think it's geared towards that. It's very expensive, coming in at seven forty nine, dollars and that's the, the full suite. It has very, very limited audio editing capabilities, sadly. But I think they're getting better uh, with updates. They just introduced um, playlisting and uh, doing vocal comping and stuff. So it's moving forward, but at a slow pace. MIDI editing is nowhere near Cubase or Logic, but it, there are some cool features for sure. Sampling is unreal, unmatched. It's amazing for making beats. It's amazing for flipping samples if you make hip-hop and electronic music, that kind of thing. There are a lot of good included uh, effects and instruments. Some of them are mediocre, but it's pretty solid. Maybe not as good as Logic, but it's it's solid. Stability is amazing. It's built for doing live sets, so I've never really had it crash unless due to like a VST plugin. That's uh, that's messed up. Um, the GUI and workflows are amazing. It's just super minimalist. I think just the design of it. There's a lot less smoke and mirrors when you're getting from point a to point b so it has a wonderful workflow um, it's very improvisational like you can just drag and drop effects like while you're in the middle of recording which i never have been able to do on any other program and the program can also get very deep too you can design your own plugins with max msp or max for live or whatever it's called the learning curve is great it's really easy to pick up online resources are great not the best for updates and not the most utility just because it's not really like an audio editing program. But Live is one of the best programs on this list, especially if you're interested in electronic music and uh, playing live and those kinds of things. So it's pretty well known that Skrillex uses it, Bass Nectar, and also Tame Impala is a fantastic artist that uses Live. So Ableton's highly recommended. Next one is a super popular program called FL Studio, which is on Windows and more recently Mac. It is very suitable for beginners and pros alike, and it's definitely targeted towards beat makers and electronic producers. The full version comes in at $4.99. It has horrible audio editing capabilities. I would not get it for that. MIDI editing is fine, but it really shines as a sampling and beat making platform. Um, 
So that's kind of what it is. It's fantastic for making drum beats and uh, hip hop beats and uh, EDM tracks and those kinds of things. One of the best in this whole uh, category for sure. So that's awesome. They do a great job of updating it. And uh, overall, I would say, yeah, it's just more targeted towards like someone that's doing a producer. I wouldn't get it if you're recording audio or doing like analog stuff like that. I definitely wouldn't get it if you're interested in mixing or working in studios. But that being said, it could be a good DAW to use kind of like on the side if you want to make your drum beats and stuff like that. I've uh, met a lot of producers that do that too. They'll use Pro Tools for a lot of the recording and then they'll kind of make the drums and stuff in FL. So that's that one. Studio One is a very new program that's intriguing. It is on both Windows and Mac. It's suitable for beginners for sure. I don't know too many pros using it, so I can't comment on that. I think the target market's sort of the all-around producer. It's It looks very similar to Cubase, so it has some of that feel to it, like the deep MIDI editing, and it has a lot of cool intuitive features, but I think it's a little cluttered. But um, it the cost is right up there in the middle. And um, it's got it's super solid across the board. I haven't used it quite as much as some of these other programs, but I think it's very solid. It's very stable. I would recommend it for beginners that are trying to kind of get their feet wet. But it's definitely not a pro standard at this current moment. And I don't really know any famous producers that use it. So if you know any, definitely leave me a comment so I can check them out. But Studio One, you should definitely check it out. You could subscribe to it. It's super solid. Another little bit of a wild card is Reason. So I actually started using Reason. I think it's a wonderful program. I think it's definitely a little bit better for beginners and hobbyists. It does cost a decent chunk of change. I don't know if that's worth it. But um, it is mostly, so it has like a rack setup. So basically you get a visual representation of like a hardware rack just on your computer. So it's super cool from that respect. It can get very deep. It's very customizable. It's just a wonderful program. But sadly, these days, it doesn't stack up super well to everything else. Um, it's just it took them way too long to start to integrate VST plugins and stuff like that. I would recommend actually using Reason as the rack plugin. So you can just use it for effects and like the drum machine and stuff like that just in your other DAW. But if you're a professional or if you're trying to become a professional music uh, music producer or mix engineer or whatever, I don't really know if that's going to be the move these days. I think a lot of these other programs are just going to be more universally uh, used and just have more features and are just a little bit faster to get from point A to point B. But Reason's an amazing program. I have a soft spot for it. I think a lot of people that were learning music in the early 2000s uh, started with Reason. It just kind of like was the best and the coolest program back then. But then Ableton and all these other programs started to really step up their game. So check out Reason though. It's cool. Next is Luna, which is a brand new program by Universal Audio. Sadly, it's Mac only. It's pretty limited i've used it and was a bit disappointed but it's a good company universal audio has a ton of great products and i'm sure they'll be updating it i'm sure it'll be competitive at some point but in in at this moment in 2022 i don't think it's the move if you have an apollo obviously you can get it for free and uh, if you don't then you can't even use the software so it's really limited and uh, it has a very sleek GUI I think it, it looks super cool it's very promising it has cool effects and things like that but right now it's not really an industry standard uh, program so and I don't really even know anyone that uses it except for maybe Pete Thorne in a couple of videos but if you know anyone that uses it for sessions definitely let me know I want to check them out and see what their workflow is like next is digital performer which is a really cool program, but I haven't really gotten a chance to use it, so I'm not going to comment on any details. But one producer that I used to listen to, his name's Baths, used Digital Performer, and uh, supposedly it's a very complex program. It looks super cool, actually. It has some features that remind me of Ableton Live, but it does have audio editing and, and various uh, songwriting and production capabilities. So you should check it out. I think it's a little bit more tailored towards like an advanced user. But as far as what most people are using in the industry right now, I don't think it's super popular, at least not as popular as Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, those kinds of programs. So worth checking out, though. You should check out the site. It has a lot of interesting stuff on there. And lastly, Reaper. 
that is a fantastic program, and uh, especially if you're a beginner or hobbyist, entry level, trying to get into it, the cost is pretty unbeatable, except by logic, but if you're using Windows, you should check out Reaper. It's pretty powerful, and um, really, I don't know too many people that use it professionally, but if you're just trying to get your feet wet and want sort of a cheap program on Windows that will allow you to edit audio and mix and stuff like that, I think you should check out Reaper. But I don't know if it's really going to be an industry standard program anytime soon. So I would just kind of say it's more geared towards like a beginner hobbyist. But you should definitely check out Reaper if you're not aware of it. So we're just going to wrap up this conversation with a couple quick recommendations for specific kinds of people that I know are out there. So if you're a minimalist, you should definitely be looking at Ableton Live and maybe Logic because those are very sleek. If you're a live performer or improvising musician, you should definitely be looking for Ableton Live. And you could also check out Logic too because of the main stage capability. If you're a hip hop and rap beat maker, you should definitely be using FL Studio. Could also try Logic. If you're a recording or mixing engineer or trying to get into that or trying to work in a studio, you should definitely be using Pro Tools. If you are a pop slash rock multi-genre producer, or composer and you have a Mac computer, you should definitely get Logic. If you're on a budget and on Mac, you should also get Logic or GarageBand, which is free. If you're on a budget and want a subscription plan, uh, which you can get through the Splice website, you should check out Studio One. If you're on a budget and you only have Windows, you should check out Reaper. If you're an old school vibe person, you should definitely be using Reason. If you're a serious composer, as well as a powerhouse producer slash mixer, someone that needs all-around audio and MIDI functionality, then you should definitely check out Cubase. You could also use Logic as well. If you are a heavy metal rock artist or recording uh, engineer or producer, you should definitely be using Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic. And lastly, if you're a musician and you're not into production, I would recommend that you check out Logic or Ableton Live because I think those two are the most intuitive if you come from a instrumentalist background. One important thing that I should note is that you can do pretty much anything music related in all these programs. So really just the purpose of this video is kind of highlight some strengths and weaknesses that I have found using different DAWs as a person that weirdly learns new DAWs for fun which uh, might be a little crazy. But in any case, I really hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments or feedback or whatever, I would love to chat with you about it. So leave a comment. And, you know, it's not necessarily like a DAW war or anything, but, but the, the main point of this video is to help people kind of figure out how to use their time best. So if you're going to invest a bunch of time in, let's say, maybe taking a course on a program or uh, learning how to use a program so you can make music or play live or whatever, I just want to make sure that you're spending that time learning a program that's going to really pay off in the long run. So I hope you find this helpful and uh, happy music making and I'll catch you guys soon later. Later.